Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Private Lime. You all seem to have really enjoyed the last top 10 guide, so today we're going to be doing another one. I'm going to be covering my top personal favorite locations on the map to base up in, in Project Zomboid, and a few facts about the place and maybe a couple pros and cons on the way. These won't be in order of importance, but separated in groups on the overall map, so hopefully I'll give you all an option wherever you are on the actual map. Oh yeah, quick little disclaimer, these are all going to be maps that I've personally based up in, so I might miss a couple that are really juicy on the way, and if I did, please uh, leave your own suggestions down in the comments section down below. I'm sure others would find use in it as well. Anyways, now let's get started. Alrighty, to start it off, we're going to be in Muldraw for the first three maps, and this one is definitely a very popular, but very good choice to have, especially for the beginner, and that is the secluded Muldraw Northern Farmhouse. This bad boy has a lot of forest near it, so you can easily get your foraging needs in. It's very easy to start farming and trapping, and it is secluded from the town, while also being kind of close enough to where it wouldn't take an entire day to, you know, get some looting supplies. So overall, this is a very strong pick. Second here on the list is definitely my favorite base location in Muldraw, period, and you have the McCoy's Logging Corporation for that. This bad boy has so much loot in it, you're bound to get a lot of supplies that you need to actually build up your base. It also has very spacious interior garage doors, so you can easily fit in vehicles if you want. A lot of good materials are in the area for you to start your own projects as well. Also, there's barely any zombies here. I only come across like five, and that's at max at this place, so you know you're going to be very safe. This is the spot to go to if there's no other that's like actually safe. Alrighty, for the last one in Muldraw, we are going to be covering the in-town urban warehouse. Now, this bad boy is covered by fences, so if you're actually able to lock down the entrance, this place is going to be an impenetrable fortress. It also has quite a bit of maneuvering room to build your own house if you so want that as well. Also, the storage unit has a really high chance of spawning a generator, and also the, the warehouse is obviously going to have some really good stuff. Overall, it's really good, especially since it's actually centralized in the town, so you don't need to move much at all to get any more loot than you need. Alrighty, now that we have a couple of good base locations for Muldraw, we're going to be moving over to the small town of Rosewood, home of the very famous Rosewood Penitentiary. Now, this place has a lot of good options. Most of them are going to be in town, as it is a very small map location. Low population, so you won't have to worry about many zombies at the very least, though. So first up on the list, we have these two isolated forest tomes. Each one is just as strong as the other. They are in the woods quite a bit to where you're not going to be getting a lot of neighbors. They also have some pretty nice interiors, also a couple of garages. Not much in terms of loot, but you can forage there. And it is very close to town, so you're not going to be making a day's trip in order to get anything. Second up on the list is actually a little bit up north, and it is going to be the construction site. This, again, has a fence all around it. Fences are great for building a base because no matter how many zombies come to your location, you're never going to be really exposed. It also has three trailers for you to make use of whatever, and it also has a crap ton of log piles for you to get started. Also, it being in the middle of an open field, after a couple of months, trees will start to spawn in, and you could probably even make your own self-sustaining ecosystem. Very strong pick, indeed. Last but not least, this is going to be a little bit more of an undertaking than the usual one, and that is the entire gated community. Now, if you're able to get enough vehicles to cover each of the entrances, you will have a very strong base that has multiple homes, multiple, like, second-story homes to your disposal. So this would be great, I'd say, for a multiplayer occasion to where if you have multiple people, you can give someone a house. And there's a lot to go around, all of it is gated in, also there are a lot of room for expansions, so it's a very, very good spot. Also, the segmented fences are really great to see what's actually going on outside, as with the wooden ones, you're not actually able to see through them, so having that in the base as well is very nice. Overall, very top tier pick if you can actually get enough vehicles to uh, secure it. Alrighty, we're going to be moving our way up to Riverside now. Now, the beautiful thing about Riverside is that it's literally in the name. There is a river right next to it. So if you build close enough up to the shore, you will have infinite fishing needs, which is very nice for a self-sustaining actual base. Anyways, we're going to be going over my top picks for this area. 
First up is one that I have been in a lot of times, and that's gonna be the bar slash food market area just up north of town. This place is honestly very secluded for a normal population setting, especially being close to the town. There are a lot of good locations nearby as well, like a gas station and spiffos if you can make it, but you will generally have what you need just from the start. The food market and the actual grocery store are very good picks to actually have enough food to last you quite a bit to level up some of your more, I guess, harder to earn skills. So this is a very nice place. The bar also has a little balcony on the top that actually can't be broken. So if you really like to use fences, this is a really great low fence that's practically unbreakable from my experience, and it's very easy to farm kills inside the little kill box. Also, just the appeal of basing up in a bar. Like, come on, it's a classic. Alrighty, the second one is very close to it, actually. They are all in, like, the same general location, but it's gonna be the junkyard. Now, this place is gonna be filled with a lot of wrecks, so if you are a huge mechanics fan, there's gonna be a lot of stuff for you to take apart and learn up your skill here. There's also, it's very bare bones with the actual, I guess, indoors. There's only a single trailer. You're probably gonna need to grab some furniture from the nearby homes, but what it makes up in that is security. It has a full two-tile fence all along, and all you really need is some furniture or a car to make make it basically impenetrable. Very nice location, very close to uh, some really nice spots as well. If you don't feel safe at the river sidebar, then this is definitely the spot to go, because you're not really going to miss much, but it is a little bit more out there. Last but not least, we have the Country Club in Riverside. Now this is going to be a little bit more of an undertaking, as it is a very, very, very big base. But the thing is, is that it has a couple nearby lakes, so you won't even have to worry about heading up to the river. It's very secluded once you actually clear out the initial population inside. And the interior is very cool and spacious. I mean, who doesn't want to live in a country club? It's literally like one of the better apocalypse, I'd say, bases. I mean, it's even got a freaking tennis court. What more do you need? I'll see you can fish in the pool. So, uh, take that advice how you will. The next town we're going to be moving over to is definitely one of the more infamous on the game because of its just sheer deadliness and population compared to the others, but we're going to be moving over to the beautiful quaint town of West Point. Now it's definitely a lot harder to find that perfect base when there are so many zombies to be around, but I think I found a few that are honestly really top tier picks here. The first one here is definitely my go-to pick for any base in West Point, just because I, I love it a lot, and that is actually going to be the West Point storage lots. Now it has a fence around it, but you are going to need a lot more vehicles than any other one I'd say in order to secure it, because there are two different entrances zombies could get in, but what it makes up in that is a lot of loot. The chances you get a generator are very high, and if you get a sledgehammer, you can actually kind of make a nice little honeycomb base. And it is very nice to make your own little storage, I guess, room base. It's honestly very cool aesthetically, and if you haven't tried it, I say try it yourself. You can really make a room pop with just a little bit of creativity. It's also close enough to the downtown area to where you're not going to need to worry about loot, though the zombies might be a little bit of a problem. But the good thing is that you can use the two low fences to actually clear out the hordes a little bit easier than you would anywhere else. It also has a barbed wire fence up north, so if the ones in house break, you can use the ones up there. It's also very close to a warehouse and gas station, so you're going to have all your essential resources right there in the area. Heck, you could even go grab a generator from the storage units and put it at the gas station to have infinite fuel to fuel your generators. It's definitely my favorite out of the three West Point base locations I'm going to list. If you don't like a lot of zombies in your area, then this next pick is going to be the one for you. And I'm going to be doing the secluded homes by the lake just up north of West Point. It's quite a bit of a distance, but that also means you don't need to worry about any unwanted neighbors. Now, I actually used this, like these three homes, in my super zombies run to escape them, and I was actually able to live pretty comfortably for a while. So this is definitely a really good pick. It has three really big, spacious homes, each of them having their own uh, built-in furnace, so you don't need to worry about the winter. You already have that covered. You basically have a free fire pit. And also, there is a hunting shack right below the lake, which actually does have an antique stove, which you can take and bring along for the journey. The abundance of forest and the abundance of water nearby, you have a single lake and the entire river right next to you, so fishing is going to be no joke. As long as you got a fishing rod, you're eating good, right? <laughs> But yeah, beautiful place for foraging, beautiful place for farming, and starting your own little homestead. 
this is definitely one of the most solid picks on the list, I'd say. It's just an overall great place. Other than the, I guess, exclusion from the rest of the area. It is going to be quite a bit of a trip to actually go into town. But with uh, West Point and its high loot, you probably don't need to worry much about that. You're probably going to be set the first couple trips. Last and finally not least on the list is probably the most iconic West Point base, and that is Twiggy's. Honestly, I don't need to explain it much. It's right below the gun store, and below that, even, is a Gigamart for all your food needs. I mean, most of this comes just from the aesthetic of basing up in a bar. Because immediately when I think of basing up at Twiggy's, I think of one of my favorite movies, Shaun of the Dead. And just, I guess, making that a reality is always really fun. When you have no better plan, especially with friends, I'd say Twiggy's is your next best bet. It's just a really good place all in all. How's that for a slice of fried gold? Yeah, boy! Alrighty, now that we have like the four main town locations out of the way, we're going to be heading up to Valley Station, home of the mall, and home of the gun range, which is a very good place to actually get a lot of firearms. But yeah, first things first, we're going to be covering the storage lots in the area. Now this bad boy is completely fenced in, there's not even an entrance or exit, so you, you won't even have any prep necessary. As soon as you climb that fence, you are safe. You are completely safe from the elements, so there is that. Also, the chances that you get a generator are pretty high. Now, some of the drawbacks in being in this is that it's going to be very long of a trip to actually make it to any other town in the area. But you do have the mall nearby, so if you want that to be a challenge, the storage lots are a very nice pick. Alrighty, the second place I'm going to be covering in Valley Station is going to be the construction site. Not much is to be said about this place. It has a couple trailers and buildings for you to have your own storage needs. It's very open, very spacious. It's right up, right below the river as well, so you can get some fishing out of the way. Also, the high fences are obviously one of the main takeaways. Very easy to secure and very easy to maintain. And it's an overall very good spot for uh, expansion. Now that we got all the main quadrants of the map in, we're going to be covering some of freebies that I personally like and that I've personally come across during my travels. First one I'm going to be covering is definitely one of the more secluded ones, but it's honestly a pretty nice pick. It's a very nice little place, honestly very scenic, you have a lot of toilets to get some water from, you live right next to the river, and the isolation is great. But the thing is, is that it's isolated, yet it also has a gas station, like not too far below it, so you have a free supply of gas as well. Very like small town, rustic type feel, and it's definitely a nice place to be. Honestly, the interior is very cool, the exteriors are even cooler, it has that like the old barn look feel to it. Honestly. Very nice. Couple of shops nearby too, so the chances that you get a lot of food are pretty high as well. Okay, now we are finally on the final location, and definitely one of my favorites. I'm actually based up here right now as we are speaking. But this is going to be the farm to the west. This is probably the best base you're going to come across if you want a nice centralized location between all the major cities, such as Riverwood, West Point, and Muldraw. Honestly, very top tier pick. It also has a nearby well, so you won't need to worry about water, like, at all. It has a couple of nearby fences, which is always good for training zombies. And it's pr a pretty solid pick. It's also right up next to the Pony Romo, so you can get a very cool sign from that as well that you can place in front. Kind of like a lawn ornament. Very nice spot, though. Alrighty, that's gonna conclude it for my favorite base locations. Now, these aren't objective in any way, this is just my own opinion and the bases that I've personally used and I personally liked. So if you guys have any suggestions or any bases that you really like, be sure to let them down below. I'll even allow links so you guys can place the exact coordinates for the PZ Map project so people can find them a little bit easier. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy it, I'd really like if you subscribed, like, do all that YouTube stuff. Anyways, I'm not going to waste any more of your time. I will see you guys in the next episode or series. Have a dang good day. Peace out.